What's up guys? It's a new day, IRL, same day in game. We just met Zaddy Sanders. We got to sit next to him and we're at lunch now. Let's see if we're gonna get to sit next to him at lunch too. So far, hate my best friend. So let's go ahead and resume this. Wow, the cafeteria is nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts, wafts, <laughs> we've established I can't read, okay? Through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters, I guarantee it's his fried chicken sweat. Ooh, bring that zaddy here. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? I hate this boy. Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Oh my god! Yeah. What a king! A king! Oh my god. Marry me now. I love when people make me food. That must be the smell I smelled. Do you smell it? That smell. The kind of smelly smell. A smelly smell that smells smelly. You hold your breath waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented. Oof. But were the rumors true? And this! Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled higher, huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish! Stop it. Get some help. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can oh yeah I forgot we're in cooking school I'm not here to fucking <laughs> date this man but I actually I am here to date this man okay but that's <laughs> all I say about that what you think we want your stupid secret recipe dude nah my dude nah I'm just drafting a last will and testament in case one of those ingredients is poison got him he looks nervously around to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn it wasn't really a sick burn you wait to see what zinger Ashley has prepared to to follow up but she suddenly takes a different approach yeah and I was just like writing in my diary dear diary today I felt something beautiful I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender girl stop she is a step the fuck off my man oh my god this bimbo we are gonna fight girl fight we are going to fight you see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides close fucking snake. She realizes that she is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. No, girl, I'm gonna win him. I always get what I want. I always get what I want, okay? Mm. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any fun, I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. How can you do that? How can you set it in your mouth like that and not be impressed? That's what she said. <laughs> The Colonel's chicken? Are you even cultured? Anyways, easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of one of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. Ooh, it's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you afloat. After you taste his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Sanders. I approach him, he smiles ever so softly as I approach, he stops what he's doing and allows me to break the silence. I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? How bold of you to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all the time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. I look at him. Zaddy with the cane. It's just you and me here talking. 
I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got moxie, I'll give you that. What is moxie? A drug? I thought you were American. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and leans in. Ooh, is he kissing me? You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow, you'd have never guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you search. While you wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find him outside standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I'd like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world, you can bet on that. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery was perfect. I'm sure you'll be a big success. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow- oof. Oof, don't say we're not going to blow anything, okay? Because Colonel Sanders standing over there looking fine as fuck. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creation. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel. Would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is, me and you, if it wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, for us still. I'll prepare our station. Without you, as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Didn't she like the the pop-pop guy? I, like, maybe he's not a kid? One thing worse than a rapist. Boom. A child. Oh my god, without peeling it, ate the whole banana. That What skill? She loves his enthusiasm. Oh, it's too late to choose to- I don't- Honestly, this story ain't about Miriam, okay? It's about me getting with Colonel Sanders. This is my life. She can- She wanted to work with Clank. She could have worked with Clank. It's not my fault for choosing Pop. She said that she liked him, okay? She, she should speak up more. I don't like Miriam. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking class. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide it up into steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Egg tartare seems easy. It's fancy. You don't even need to cook it. Oh, we're going to have him make his grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes, egg gravy. Ah! I'm gonna win this man. I'm going to win him. I couldn't imagine one without the other. I actually don't like gravy on my mashed potatoes. I like the KFC famous bowl though. Zaddy does know his chicken. Colonel Sanders he cast a coy look at you causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <laughs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Yes, the fuck I do, bitch, and you got a fucking problem? Enemy spotted. We're just cooking partners. Mind your business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Ah, no, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Fristel's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. What a man. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your friend. Howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we what is this music? Oh my god. Anyways, are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no, it looked like Fristel was struggling, so we offered to give her a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. <gasps> doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. 
But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you then, than this thing that has positioned herself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. That was a good one, actually. I hate Ashley. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. I need to ask for backup before things get ugly. I turn to Colonel to confirm you're on the same page. Ooh, my man. Ooh, neither of you has Frizzle's natural talent or loyalty. It left me feeling proud and full of potential. I look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy nature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mash texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. He extends his hand holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering my nearly finished potato dish. Look at that. A masterpiece from my man. We work together so beautifully. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. That wink! Woo! Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you the most. What did they say? I don't remember. The best of all the utensils. Okay. You reach out and grab a hold of it. That's what she said. But he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork. And for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stop. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. What does that have to to do with this. We are eating mashed potatoes, sir. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage, without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes, scooping up a fingerful, Van tastes the dripping mashed potato and gravy and realizes it's delicious. Nice. Horrified, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something like this with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Fristo. We do not waste food. Can I ask potatoes, face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty braised tentacle of op octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Wow. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first fight, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed. They may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. Uh-oh. Oh, he died. Miss Keisha. Miss Keisha. Miss Keisha. Oh my fucking god, she fucking dead. Wow, there, there's been a death? There's been a death! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it's gone, you notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd there, motionless as statues. The bell snapped everyone back into reality. It would appear that his enthusiasm for trying new things inoculated him against the poison of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. He stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. He's beautiful. What a, what a pure man. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders, yes, Fristel, there's something I need to tell you. Van Van! Oh my god. When I was just a boy, I had a dream 
that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weight, like so many ways. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Shut up, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Yeah, no, you're ugly. Bye. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. I'm the hero. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. The spork monster? Oh, he's leaving. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? Before we can discuss syntax any further, a turn-based fight sequence. What will I do? I decide to go on an attack. Cook with love. Wow. Ooh, he spit hot gravy on me. Mashed mind draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. I decide to defend. Which defense will I use? Trepidation. I curl into a ball. Oh my gosh, ultimate attack. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Oh! Look at him! Amazing. Pot pie power pinch. <laughs> Does 10 damage. Spork monsters defeated. You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. It's not worth my wrath. It left behind a cookbook. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Open a cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name is Borko. Borko, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, what battle? I literally cowered. You realize that your attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. A few inches later. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes before you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders for some reason. Sprinkles is also there instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Oh, wow. Look at my dream. Amazing. That's going to be the end for today. When I come back tomorrow, we'll play day two, and it'll be so much fun. I can't wait. I'm having a lot of fun with Daddy Sanders. And uh, that battle was sick. He's this is this is a fun game. Definitely worth it. For free? For free? Are you kidding me? Okay, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank you for watching. <laughs>